anytime, anywhere. Election is just 23 days away. With that in mind, we are all about local politics today. One of the big ballot measures Oregonians will soon be voting on is Measure 110. It's called the Drug Addiction Treatment and Recovery Act. This measure would decriminalize most drugs and downgrade most possession charges. It would also create a statewide council that would provide grant funding for addiction treatment. Measure 110 opponents say it will destabilize the recovery efforts that are already taking place in Oregon. We are going to hear from both sides of Measure 110 right now. Here with the yes on Measure 110 campaign, Anthony Johnson, a former criminal defense lawyer and longtime drug policy reform activist. And representing the no on 110 campaign, Mike Marshall, executive director of Oregon Recovers, one of the leading advocacy groups in the state. Thank you to both of you for coming on the program. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. How would you both describe efforts right now when it comes to treating drug addiction and providing recovery here? Anthony, I'll start with you. Yeah, the current approach has failed all of Oregonians, no matter whether you live in rural areas, suburban areas, urban areas. We have failed in treating addiction appropriately. We treat drug addiction, a health issue, with a harsh criminal justice approach. What we need is to switch to a health-based approach, and that's what Measure 110 does. It does not legalize any drugs. It establishes a humane, health-based system to address drug addiction. Instead of, a, instead of arresting and jailing people, we need a fun treatment. And, Michael, uh, go to you. Same question. Efforts right now, describe them when it comes to treating drug addiction and providing recovery here. Right. Um, well, Lincoln, thanks for having us on this important debate. It's really important to Oregon's parents and Oregon's kids uh, and our families. Um, by way of introduction, I want everyone to know I'm a person of long-term recovery. I've recovered from... Uh, 10 years of meth use and a lifetime of alcohol use and uh, 12 years in recovery. So when he, Anthony says the system has failed, he's just so disrespecting the 400,000 Oregonians that uh, uh, identify as being in recovery. He um, also is being disrespectful of the 3,500 certified alcohol and drug counselors and the 800 peer mentors and the 80 plus treatment providers in the state, most of whom are opposing this measure. Um, Oregon is in an addiction crisis. We have the third highest addiction rate, and we rank last in access to treatment. And that is not because the system in itself is just failing. It's the absence of a system. And Measure, measure 110 will not change that. In fact, what it's going to do is decriminalize drugs for kids and adults alike, which means that they're, uh, for those for who the healthcare system have failed and the criminal justice system is the last access for them to get treatment, mm -hmm. this will cut off that treatment for far too many of them, leading into an increase in drug overdoses. Okay. Um, and lastly, it's going to reduce the number, as a consequence of that, it will reduce the number of treatment slots in the state um, with funding that's really intended for schools and county mental health programs. Anthony, let me ask you, why should Oregonians support Measure 110? Yeah, Measure 110 should be supported by Oregonians because addiction has touched too many lives all across the state. All of us have had addiction issues either ourselves or with our loved ones, and they don't have the treatment access that they need. People have to wait weeks, if not months. And we have people dying of drug overdoses every day. We have nearly 9,000 Oregonians, disproportionately black and indigenous and people of color, who have their lives ruined for a simple mistake. And I'm, I myself, Measure 110, proponents, we are not disrespecting the people that are doing great work in this field. That's why we want to give more revenue to people, nearly $100 million or more in additional revenue for drug treatment and recovery providers, such as Bridges to Change, the Mental Health and Addiction Association of Oregon, the Alano Club of Portland, uh, Central City Concerned, people doing great work all across the state. And people can see that the current system does not work, resting and jailing people for a health addiction does not work. We need a treatment-based, health-based approach, and that is why they should support Measure 110. Mike, let me ask you, you have concerns about this, obviously. How would this measure impact recovery efforts, from your perspective, already taking place? Um, well, first of all, it's not new money. It's taking money away from county mental health and addiction programs that are community-based. And so, as of January 1st, those organizations and those programs will lose their funding and it's going to go into a bank account at the Oregon Health Authority. More importantly, it doesn't put any money into prevention. Um, it has no goals. 
and it's um, it's treating children as adults. And so a kid that's busted with an eight ball of meth or, you know, I think 40 tabs of acid or 10 hits of ecstasy um, uh, are simply going to get a, a, a ticket, which is going to take away parents' ability to get them into treatment or to the front of the line for treatment. And let's let Anthony, I totally agree that access to treatment for kids in particular is really hard. But this measure doesn't require the development of any treatment beds whatsoever. It doesn't have one goal, one outcome that's required. It's simply spending more money um, uh, or injecting more money into a system that's um, uh, not been fully designed and that has really been burdened by the lack of accountability and the lack of specific outcomes. Uh, Anthony, let me ask you, what kind of changes would we see to drug penalties then under this measure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's been a lot of misrepresentations about this measure. You know, this measure does not legalize any drugs. And an eight ball or uh, that of meth that Mike mentioned, larger amounts will remain criminal offenses. This measure only applies to misdemeanor amounts that are the lowest level possession offenses. Driving under the influence, selling, uh, other offenses related to drug addiction will remain. And that is why the Oregon School Psychologists Association, the Oregon Nurses Association, National Social Workers Association, the Oregon Oregonian Editorial Board endorses this measure because we talk to parents, teachers, and they realize that we don't need to arrest and jail juveniles and saddle them with harmful criminal records, take away their financial aid and job opportunities. We need to provide them with treatment, and this measure will provide $100 million in treatment for much-needed services and treatment and recovery options that we need desperately in this state. Mike, you're, you're shaking your head. He did just talk about penalties here. What, what, what do you have to say about the penalty aspect of this? So a, a kid in a high school bathroom is found with 40 hits of, of acid or I think 10 hits of ecstasy is going to get a hundred dollar ticket and more importantly will no longer have access to the court system that would help his parents get him the treatment that he needs it's simply going to be um a ticket anymore and the, the the system unfortunately we've put all of our intervention money in the criminal justice system and that's unfortunate our doctors our nurses our social workers all need to be trained to intervene much farther upstream in people's lives but that's not the case. And so we support the idea of decriminalizing drugs. Nobody should be made a, a, a criminal because of their addiction. I certainly didn't ever want to be a criminal because of my addiction. But before we try and shove them into a healthcare system that's not ready to receive them, we're putting the cart before the horse by cutting off access to treatment and recovery, by breaking this down to a violation, which then means that, that anyone that gets this violation will no longer be given uh, the front of the line access to treatment that the courts are currently providing. And I think it's really important to point out also, no one today in Oregon went to jail because they were arrested for possession of the amounts that Anthony just referenced, unless they chose to. In other words, they were given in drug court the opportunity to go to treatment and they said no, in which case they probably got probation. They probably didn't even go to jail. Um, but the, the point is, is that our system is built on choices. And what Measure 110 does is take away choices, particularly for parents relative to um, helping people get the health care they need um, when they suffer from addiction. A Anthony, I saw you shaking your head there as well. So I want to give you a chance to respond once again before I move to the next question. Yeah, Measure 110 is ultimately about people. Think about yourself. Think about your loved one. Think about your child. Do you want the phone call that they are arrested and jailed and they're going to lose their financial aid, they're going to lose their housing, they're going to lose their employment opportunities? Or do you want the phone call that there are treatment and recovery options available to get them the help that they need to save and improve their lives? That's the difference between the current system and Measure 110. If you believe in ending criminal penalties for low-level possession charges like Mike says he does, if you believe in funding more treatment and recovery option like Mike says he does, then you should vote yes on Measure 110. There are two systems on the on the ballot right now. The current system that over-incarcerates, over-jails, over-arrests over people, disproportionately people of color, and underfunds treatment, or Measure 110 that will end harmful low-level possession arrests and provide $100 million for more treatment treatment and recovery options. Do you both agree that incarceration is not the the answer here? Mike, I'll start with you. 
for many people, because the healthcare system is failing them, it is their only answer uh, at this time. And to take that away before we build the other system, that's where Measure 110 fails. Anthony's absolutely not telling the truth. There is no requirement that it increase access to treatment. Just putting money into a system without any goals means that some organizations are going to get a lot of money, but then Burns and uh, Coos Bay and Gresham are, are not going to get any money because there is no existing infrastructure there to apply for these funds. And the last thing I would say is, Anthony, yes, no parent wants to get a call that their child was arrested because they were found with heroin in the, the school bathroom. But more importantly, no parent wants to get um, call, the call that their child has OD'd and died because the week before they were found with heroin and they got a $100 ticket and they were not offered a pathway to recovery. Measure 110 does not guarantee a pathway to recovery. It doesn't um, require the development of even one more treatment bed or one more detox center or one more recovery high school. We need a system that's, and, and we need to fund a system that has clear cut goals and clear cut outcomes, including equity goals and equity outcomes and expungement goals and expungement outcomes. So that this measure, which is just all about winning a decrim um, uh, political battle, doesn't look backwards and it doesn't look forwards. It's, it's, okay. it, it smells good, but it tastes awful. Okay, Anthony, I want to give you a chance to respond to that incarceration, incarceration question as well. Of course, jailing and incarceration is a bad policy if you want to treat addiction. People do not get good treatment in prison and in jail. You're more likely to overdose if you're in jail or in prison. If you By suffering those prison sentences, you ruin people's chances to improve their livelihoods. Under Measure 110, whether you're a juvenile, whether you're an adult, you'll get access to treatment. And it's simply not true that Measure 110 will not create more treatment beds. I, I encourage I'm everybody to, re, to yeah, I they encourage everybody, I encourage everybody to read the measure. It's at voteyesonone110.org. Look at section two, bottom page three. You will see that low barrier use to disorder treatment and evidence-informed, trauma-informed, cultural responsive manner is included in the measure. So treatment is included. Peer and recovery services are included. Transitional and supportive housing is included. Job training is included. Overseen by people who know this issue the best. And that is why the Oregon Academy of Family Physicians endorses this measure. That is why the Coalition of uh, Communities of Color endorses this measure. The NAACP endorses this measure. The Oregon Food Bank endorses this measure. Rarely do you see such a wide swath of a coalition to endorse this measure because they understand we need to move away from a health, we need to move away from a criminal-based approach towards a health-based approach. Okay. Stop these harmful arrests and fund treatment, and that's what Measure 110 does. Lincoln, can I just say, because he listed some Go really ahead. great organizations that have endorsed it, but I think it's really important to note Oregon Recovers has come out against it, and we've been working for three years to build a new system of care. More importantly, the Oregon Council for Behavioral Health which represents all the treatment providers in the state, they're opposing it. The addiction doctors, the Oregon Society for Addiction Medicine, they voted not to support it. There's nine local governments in Oregon have passed resolutions in the last two years declaring addiction a public health crisis. Not one of those policymakers has endorsed this measure. Not one city council member, not one county commissioner, not one mayor. The folks that are working day to day to end Oregon's addiction crisis are not supporting this measure. Other folks look at it. They've been promised a bill of goods. But as you heard Anthony say, it lists the things that the money can be spent on. But he can't say that at, after two years, there's going to be three more treatment providers or 60 more treatment beds or a, a, re a reduction of one week in wait lists or anything like that. It is just a throwing a bunch of money at some ideas okay. without any concrete outcomes. Okay, you both rattled yeah. off lists of endorsements here. Uh, Anthony, I'll go back to you. Uh, Mike's saying different kinds of endorsements on his side. What do you say to what he just said? Yeah, look at uh, voteyes on 110.org. You will see an unprecedented coalition of endorsers, including... Brent Canode, who's the co-founder of Oregon Recovers, along with Mike, who's now the executive director of the Alano Club of Portland, the Mental Health and Addiction Association of Oregon, Bridges to Change, 
Central City Concern. They're all members of the Oregon uh, Council of Behavioral Health. So the Oregon Council of Behavioral Health does not and does not represent all of those people because one of their board members, Bridges the Change, one of the largest providers in the state, endorses Measure 110. And so look at our list. Compare our list to their list. You'll see uh, law enforcement. You'll see people who make money off the current system, and you'll see. They're, this is the big difference. They think the current system is fine as it is, and we can pass legislation on down the road. We see a crisis now that must be addressed. We want to stop these harmful arrests and fund treatment, and that's why you'll see we have a much broader coalition than they do. All right. Anthony Johnson, Mike Marshall, thank you to both of you for chatting with us. We appreciate it. But we have.